The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Let's take a look at the German DAX. As you can see, it's been in a minor uptrend here for the last uh, several days. If we take a look at the FTSE, you'll notice that it's been just the opposite. It's been coming down. We just completed a 50% ABCD correction there a little bit earlier. So we're going to see what happens with that. A lot of things going on, folks, as far as in the market. In fact, they were so... Dramatic when I started to do the newsletter on Sunday morning, I, I realized that I should really take out two versions of the letter this week because of the fact that the importance of these days that we have at the beginning of the week. Uh, and not only that, it's just the patterns that are doing the same thing, too. Uh, regarding the gold market, we had a breakout above that uh, key level that we'd had, uh, you know, a long time ago, back at that 13 and change level. That is very, very important. Uh, silver was not able to do it, but the gold certainly did. And if we take a look at this gold here on a uh, just a daily basis, you can see here that we had a, a pretty good move uh, above that level. And what's, what's interesting about this is it stopped exactly at that 382 level. And also we had a very strong uh, increase in open interest in both gold and silver uh, on Friday. Now, it was interesting last night, on Sunday night, silver made a 78% retracement of that range uh, when gold was still down on the day. Very unusual. I'll post this so you can take a quick look at it. We'll pull this up here a little bit. And you'll see we did get up to... Uh, uh, 1583, that was a 78% level. We've now sold off about 16 cents from that level. So th that may or may not mean something. That's why we, when we have these breakouts, we have to pay close attention to them because of the fact that uh, these uh, these markets have a tendency to, to trap you at certain times. But this doesn't look like a trap in the gold market, folks. This looks like it's for real. Uh, we want to watch that closely on the pullback because it's going to be, you know, very, very interesting. Now, today we're very lucky because we are going to have one of the old buddies from Pismo Beach, Doug Ingram. He's the managing director for Capital Street, for Commerce Street <laughs> Capital Management in Dallas, Texas. And uh, Doug is the epitome of a technician. This guy, there's nothing he doesn't know about it. And you can take it from astrology through anything. He's going to talk to us about some of the things that he's looking at, what he's doing, and I think you'll enjoy it. He's a, he's a super fellow. I've known him, wow, can't believe it's been that long. But anyway, we'll, we'll be watching that very, very closely. Now we're going to take a little trip here to Bitcoin because we've had several questions about it. We've been talking about this level here for a very, very long time in Bitcoin. And if we bring up the chart here, you'll notice that on Sunday, we did hit that 78% retracement in Bitcoin, completing the big ABCD. That's at 3350, folks. Now, if we go below 3350, this is going to be, uh, I would think, relatively negative. But anything below 3100, uh, they might uh, they might turn the lights out on this thing. I don't know, but hit, this is the number we were watching. If you remember the ABCD structure that we were looking at is uh, is the uh, fellow, hold on one second here, is the ABCD structure on the long-term chart come, came in at 3,800, and uh, we're a little below that, but that's not unusual given the volatility that we have in this moving. Well, by the way, the, my guest at the break will be Doug Ingram, and he's with... Uh, Commerce Street Capital Management. So he'll be he'll be very interesting. I, I know we haven't even planned anything because I, I, I know he can cover anything that we want to cover. But he's going to he's going to tell us some things that he's looking at, which I think would be, you know, a lot of fun for us to look at. Uh, we've got about four minutes to get to the uh, to the next break, because the segment after this, I'm going to make you get out your pencils and your uh, calculators and do a little math problem, because uh, I have some some history stuff to talk about with the ABCD pattern and also a few others. But let's take a quick look here at
at the uh, let's just get the one that we want to get up here and that is the uh, FXI let's get this up here and I want to go oh, no that's not the one I want hold on just a second here this is the one I want this is the one I want this is the uh, hold on just a second here we're going to take a look here at the uh, Hang Seng index this is the one that we were waiting out. You notice that we were looking to see uh, an ABCD pattern forming up here at the 50% uh, level, and it's also at a 382 retracement of the high in January. In other words, it's taken it's taken November, December, and almost all of January, three months, to make a 382 retracement. This is a classic pattern out of uh, Gartley's book, Profits in the Stock Market. And uh, that is going to be a real interesting one to uh, to be watching uh, very, very closely. In fact, this whole segment that we're going to be talking about from now until the break is going to be about the Gartley book. The Gartley book was published in 1937. It was basically loose leaf. There was no, uh, there was not bound. Uh, and remember, we didn't have any uh, things with uh I'll try to cover natural gas a little bit later, Ruby, but this other stuff, I think, is since we're at a critical level, I'd like to do that. But natural gas is wild enough as it is anyway. So we'll we'll watch that in just a second. But uh, when Gartley did the book, it was loose leaf binder, all 500 and some pages. Uh, I got it in 19, I believe it was 1971 from Don Mack at the uh, – uh, over there at the bookstore and uh, on Little Santa Monica, and I had it for quite a while and started studying it, of course, in 73. And uh, on page 249 of that book is the ABCD pattern. He basically shows it exactly as it is, A, B, plus C, D, you know, and it gives you that pattern, and that works uh, a great deal of time, but it is not uh, foolproof. Well, um, I gave the book to my my neighbor, Charles Lindsay, who was a math uh, professor from USC, and uh, he looked at it, and he found that uh, 249 pattern to be very, very significant, and he got in touch with Larry Williams, and together, uh, well, actually, the publisher of the book was Charles Lindsay. It was called The Trident Method, and uh, there was a lot of bad, bad blood over this over the next few years between he and uh, Larry, and uh, after uh, Charles sold the book, and did his promotion for Trident. He retired and became a uh, a preacher down in, uh, I believe it was Mississippi. And uh, he, he was doing that. I hadn't talked to him for the last 25 years, but that's what he was doing at that time. But on page 249 was the ABCD pattern, just exactly as we see it today. And what I wanted to do is when we come up to the break is we're going to do a little bit of homework here. I'm going to show you, you know, what I'm looking at here just so you can get an idea. I posted that chart for the uh, the, the uh, Hang Seng, and what I wanted you to do now is uh, hold on one second here. Yes, uh, there was there was no, uh, yeah, Mr. Z, there, we didn't have any cell phones. No, every, we didn't have, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have computers until 1980 something. 83, I think, is when they brought the first computer out where we started to see price patterns. All we had was Reuters or Bunko Remo or ticker tape. I traded off a of ticker tape all that time. If you wanted an interday chart, you had to keep, you had to be there, you know, to mark off the highs and lows. So you had that. The only, the only machine that had it was ADP, automatic data processing, but that was like, you know, two grand a month. And every time you pulled off a chart, it was like $50. So, and that was really hard to get. But Conti, Commodity had one. When we get back, we're going to talk about Mr. Gartley. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to do a little trip down memory lane. And when you looked at the Trident method, which was nothing more than Gartley's AB equals CD pattern, all they did was they renamed ABCD to P1, P2, P3, P4, and then they had a little uh, mathematical formula that if it went above a certain percentage, whether it was 50%, they didn't use any Fibonacci numbers in this stuff. They just used a simple ABCD. The pattern works a lot of the time, but it's certainly not perfect. But what I would like for you to do, if you really want to see the value of it, and this is extremely important because the high that we made last night in the NASDAQ, in the Nikkei, was exactly ABCD 382, and then the market dropped well over 350 points after that spot was made. But the formula for finding the ABCD pattern is quite simple. It's B plus C, you add those two together, and then you subtract A, and that'll give you point D. And that's what those numbers are there for, for you to take a look at it to find out how close you come to the exact number. Well, the exact number last night in the Nikkei came out to 27,760. 27, the high in the uh, NASDAQ, or excuse me, the, the, uh, the Hang Seng last night was 27,761. And what I want to share with you now is something that I've learned from my good buddy, uh, Larry Williams, many, many years ago. And that is how to use the average true range. Now, follow me here just a little bit, because if you like ABCD patterns, this is very, very important. And I don't, I haven't shared this in books. I haven't shared it in seminars. This is the first time I decided to share it. And I would like for you to see the price low that we made back on the 29th of October. You'll notice that uh, we're looking at an ABCD pattern that stretches us up to the, uh, you, you can see where D is, but you see it goes above the D point. Well, look at the gap. Look at the gap right before the high was made. We made that double top there with the two Jojis. If you add that gap to the D price, it's going to give you that exact high. Now, do the same thing again. What happened last night? You'll notice uh, we had a gap here on Friday, and that means we should go a little bit higher. So if you added that gap 
to the price of where we were Friday, that takes you exactly to 27,760. And the, the exact high was 27,761. And we closed at uh, 27,400 and something, I believe. So that says that there's some type of a, a pattern that could be completing here. Now, the reason why those gaps are important is because uh, Larry Williams uh, used to talk about the average true range. In other words, you have to consider what the gap is on something to see what the true range is. A perfect example of that is the chart that I just posted just a few minutes ago for Ruby, which is the natural gas. You know, we gap down huge in natural gas, and that was partly due because the weather reports have started to turn a little bit warmer. This uh, cold spell coming through the east has started to dissipate a little bit, and hence natural gas has got hit. You can see the same thing happening in the crude oil market today. It's down about $2 a barrel. So those are things you know related to weather, but they also are related to you know how the market acts when these news items come out. One of the big questions that someone asked me this morning is how do I look at fundamentals? Folks, I don't look at fundamentals. It's really a, uh, <laughs> I just look at the charts, honest to God, I, I have watched these fundamentals uh, bite people in the rear end so many times over the years that it's really, uh, it's just really just too much to even talk about. Big things are happening in the interest rate market, folks. I wanted to point to you uh, the German Bund. This is a long-term weekly chart. We'll get this up here. And I know most of you don't trade the German Bund, but it's related to interest rates worldwide because, you know, Germany is a big industrial power. Power. I think it's number four on the list of countries. And you'll see the big ABCD pattern from 2016 right at the 78% level, which it was scheduled to get to. And if we followed it uh, last night and Friday, you'll be <laughs> very good, David. You'll be able to see here, Mr. Z, I'm sorry. Take a look here. You know, this is the German Bund. And uh, in blue, you will see our 30 year Treasury bond. And you can see how weak. Our Treasury bond is uh, since uh, since January. We've been coming down. Now, the German bond has been going up, and that's where you get these currency descriptions going on because people move their currency to the one that gets the highest interest rate with the greatest amount of safety. But notice the beautiful uh, butterfly pattern that is there uh, on that German bond, and that equates to that high on the weekly chart. It hit its flat spot on. I mean, so that's something very, very important. And they've turned down a little bit from this level. Now, with the stock market week this morning, what we could be looking at is maybe a little bit of a bounce as people look for a flight to quality. But if the bonds don't go up, with the uh, stock market, uh, you know, going down, then there's something, uh, there's even something more important to look at. So sort of pay attention to that. If you'll remember, one of our good friends, uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Meridian, uh, was on here with us about, uh, how long was that? That was about oh, two or three weeks ago. And he shared this uh, long-term cycle that he was looking at in Treasury notes. And this is the same cycle, of course, as in Treasury bonds. You'll notice here that that was due to be topping sometime in January. And here we are. Uh, in, in late January, and that's uh, that's what we're looking at here. So this could be uh, a major cycle, maybe, maybe not. Now, I, when I look at the cycles, folks, that's the last thing that I look at when I'm watching. The first thing I look at are the ratios. What are the ratios for expansion and contraction? Because that's mathematics. And uh, as Einstein said, you know, um, well, he said a lot of things, but, you know, he said mathematics precedes geometry and before God was numbers and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I just look at those ratios. The second thing I do is I go down to the pattern and I see if there's an ABCD pattern or a butterfly or some of these other patterns that we look at, a 135, to see if that matches up. And then the final thing I do is I look at the, either the astro of what's going on and then also looking at the, uh, the regular cycles that we look at. In other words, the, the cycle is nothing more than that repetitive pattern that we see happening, you know, over and over again. That's the that's the real key, you know, to what uh, I try to look at. Now, if all that fits together, then I feel pretty comfortable that yes, there should be a pretty good uh, pretty good bottom in here. In fact, we had that uh, in the euro on Friday down at that uh, 120. Excuse me, 112. Uh, 112.90 level, when we hit that exact 78% level, uh, we had a beautiful bottom there. We're now trading at 114.20. Uh, that tells us that U.S. dollar is under a little bit of pressure, so we need to pay 
uh, sort of close attention in that. So that's another one that we really need to uh, uh, pay attention to. So these mar these currency markets are ready to have a big move. When when we get back, we're going to be talking with uh, Doug Ingram from Commerce Street Capital Management out of uh, Dallas, Texas. And uh, Doug is a consummate technician, folks. He's he's been uh, he's batted on both sides of the plate. He can switch hit uh, technical to fundamentals. He does the whole nine yards, and he's really and he's a nice guy. But but by, by the top of that, but on top of that also, so it's really good. Anyway, the most important thing this week is to watch that watch this bond market because the German bond and the uh, U.S. bonds might start to play catch up, and that would mean that interest rates are going to be uh, going higher. So we'll watch that uh, uh, very, very closely when we come in. So stay tuned here. When we come up after the break, it'll be Doug Ingram of Commerce Street Capital Management will be our guest, and we'll ask him a few questions of what he's looking at and what he's watching. So we'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have an old friend on the line, uh, Doug Ingram from Commerce Street Capital Management out of Dallas, Texas. Dougie, man, how in the heck are you? Man, I am doing great. I heard the trading <laughs> you know, places music in the background. 
<laughs> oh, Dougie, I remember the last time I saw you was up in Pismo Beach. You had the boys there with Rhonda, and uh, we spent uh, a lot of time together. And of course, we've known each other a long time. But uh, Doug, folks, really knows the game. He's a cycles expert. He does a lot. And you've been with these folks more than 20 years now, haven't you, uh, Doug? With Commerce Street, I've been almost 20 years just writing that newsletter, yes. Oh, my goodness. That's really – that's fantastic. Now, how old are the boys now? they got to be in this – a couple of them got to be in their 30s. Easy. It's, uh, I think, 34 and 31 now, and uh, three little grandchildren on uh, the oh, other one side. That, that's really great to hear. Tell the folks, uh, you know, what you do for Capital Street, uh, Commerce Street Management, and what you're looking at. What are the markets? Let's just, you know, you're a managing director there, so they know what you're doing. You pretty much run the shop. But tell us a little bit about the markets that you think are really exciting right now. Do you have a, a feeling for that? Well, you know, basically I spent my time looking at cycles, and, you know, you're partly to blame for that. I got into that years ago, and I was fascinated by uh, – you know, going back to the old cycle finder where we looked for 30 and 45 day cycles until we tried to uh, hone it into something that would give us more of a roadmap of what we expected to happen. Um, now, I write like an economic newsletter, but I include my, uh, you know, my timing for what I think are going to be the corners. And uh, the current one is that we have some cycles looking pretty weak into uh, about mid February, uh, which would be lower yields into mid-February and stocks probably lower into mid-February. But in my issue that I just printed the other day, I put our roadmap for the year, and I've been surprised at how well even going out a year some of these uh, projections can be. I wouldn't be surprised because I've seen the quality of your work. <laughs> oh, anyway, listen, I have a question uh, uh, about, uh, you know, when you do your technical analysis and you, look at, uh, and you look at the cycles, what do you do after you study the cycles? What are your, what's your, your method for, you know, uh, entry? Do you have, that's one of the questions someone's asking is how do you enter a market after you think a cycle is bottom? Do you go at the market? Do you wait for a turn of an oscillator or how do you actually enter? Well, I pretty much lost a lot of money trying to buy and sell right on the cycles <laughs> over the years. And so, you know, what I like to do is if I have a cycle that's bottoming, but the market's making a slightly higher low, so what we call in the business a low ring that's a little higher, and then I would feel more confident buying there because I have something to buy against. Whereas if a cycle's peaking, I might feel comfortable getting out of some longs if I was in them, but I wouldn't short the market unless I had a lower high uh, occurring around the same time as that cycle. We've got these little nuanced cycles happening all the time. We've got the great big swings, but then we've got little ones. And uh, I, I'd wait and see these. Uh, I want to see a little confirmation. I want to see the market move my way a little bit. Oh, that's that's great risk management. That's for sure. I think that's right out of Jesse Livermore's reminiscence of a stock operator. You know, don't be oh, afraid of works. high prices. They're there for a reason. <laughs> uh, and where Doug, can the how, how low can the market go? Zero. Yeah, <laughs> zero. That's right. <laughs> we have uh, we have a question from one of our listeners uh, about the gold market. Do you follow gold at all, Doug? I'm following gold a little bit, but more so just uh, in that we, you know, for the past five weeks we've had uh, gold was up for the past five weeks and the dollar was down for the past five weeks. And we had a disconnect while gold was sort of meandering for a while. And uh, the dollar looks like it's going to be a little bit weaker for a while. The euro is going to be stronger for a while. And with gold now trading more in uh, in, in the uh, – and connected in a reverse relationship with uh, with the dollar, you'd expect that the gold rally had some legs. Yeah, it's, it's had a big increase in open interest in both gold and silver on Friday. It certainly isn't bearish. Doug, you remember when uh, Doug, uh, when Bryce Gilmore used to come out and stay at the trading house there in Pismo Beach? We met together several times. Did you ever go into some of those esoteric uh, numbers of sacred geometry that um, – that Bryce talked about and had in his wave trader program? 
You know, I did, and I put a whole lot of them in my programs as well, you know, and, and, and other stuff. You know, as we had guys come across over the years and capitalized on, uh, you know, various techniques of geometry, I put them in my, my program and pretty much lost touch with what belonged to who. But, uh, you know, all I can say is, you know, there's a lot of there. Uh, of, uh, of stuff to look at there. I forget to look at it all the time. I'll go back and go, wow, that stuff still works. Yeah, it sure does. But you know, like everything, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work all the time. That's absolutely for sure. Uh, we have a question from one of our listeners, Doug. If you had one thing to look at when you were looking at a market and you had to throw everything else out, what would that be? Well, it would be the pure cycles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I started doing technical analysis back in 78 and 79, and at the time, you know, we had those big machines at Merrill Lynch, and when nobody had a yeah. personal computer, and I wrote some of the first personal computer programs, but uh, I went down to the, to the big wire houses, and uh, they had, you know, <laughs> all these... Uh, analyses that they'd run them on doing moving average crossover systems and things like that and i you know we've come a heck of a long way since then i've used them all you know moving averages great for what they do but you know so one thing i'd have to rule out would be moving averages because they're just late to the game or you yeah you know what about the time you find a pattern that works it quits working but i i, I really like using cycles and uh mm -hmm. so i've turned into a you know, almost 100% cycle type of guy. Well, that's good. Well, you're always, that was always your forte when I knew you, you know, way back, way back when. Do you still talk to Dr. Jimmy down in Alabama? I uh, talked to him probably the last time was about half a year ago, but uh, uh -huh. certainly, and I and, uh, go see him when we swing through there. Uh -huh. I just hadn't seen him in a couple of months now. so Yeah, I try to talk to him every couple of weeks because uh, for you folks of you who don't know, Dr. Jim was my second student that I ever had way back in 1986, and we've become very good friends, and he used to come to the uh, trading house there in Pismo, especially when Bryce was there because they were friends and they liked to talk about the markets and have some fun and stuff. But, boy, those were sure the old days. Uh, 20 minutes still going strong. He's over in uh, Morro Bay over there still trading. So a lot of the gang is still around. We've lost a few of them down the road. But uh, John Hill's still going strong. He's 93, and he's still trading there in uh, Hendersonville. So a lot of these old folks are still uh, still above ground, of which I happen to be one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I remember hey, uh, Jimmy's favorite thing was the pay K. Oh, yes. What, what, that's what, right. what Bryce called the PK or whatever. He, yes, that's and, uh, right. He called it the pay K. And uh, yeah. that, 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 Jimmy really liked that. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a real great guy. Listen, I want to thank you for being on. I'll have you on again. And we'll, we'll put a little program. Maybe we'll, we'll discuss one market with some charts the next time I have you on. Hey, listen, tell Rhonda I said hello. And uh, it's been a long time, buddy, but it's good talking to you. Absolutely, anytime. Thank you. You bet. Doug Ingram of Commerce Street Capital Management, folks. We'll be right back. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 
No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, so we were talking about ABCD patterns here just a minute ago, but I wanted to uh, show you the uh, ABCD pattern here in the emerging market. You'll notice that we are completing an ABCD pattern there. We're seeing one in the, the Chinese market. We're seeing one in the uh, uh, Hang Seng. So Asia has completed that. Uh, we're looking at a potential top in the bond market, i.e. higher interest rates getting ready to go. Now, if we get above that 167 in that German bond, that would tell us that we're we're looking at something that would be, uh, you know, quite sinister. You know, regarding the interest rates, folks, we've been bearish interest rates for a very, very long time. And, you know, sure, we've had a nice rally here in the bonds, you know, dropping interest rates a small amount. But uh, over a long period of time, you know, the, the bond market doesn't look nearly as bullish uh, as uh, you'd want to look. If you just take a look here, this is just a four-hour chart, and you're going to see the exact same pattern here uh, You'll see here the exact same pattern. We have a 382 retracement uh, on Friday, excuse me, on Thursday of last week. And now what we're doing was Thursday, was yeah, it was Thursday of last week. And now we're we're down uh, testing that 145 level. And that would lead to an ABCD pattern, you know, way below 141 if it were to occur. So if we get above 146, that would negate this. But right now, that's what we're watching here on this four-hour chart. This gives you a lot of... A lot of data, folks. You got two months of data here to look at, so you're able to see the 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 back patterns and also the the nearby patterns. One of the questions that I received overnight from one of our listeners is, when I look at a chart, what are the what's the first thing I do? The first thing I do is I look at the daily. If it's at, at some type of extreme, like a high or low, I will also go to the weekly. That's one of the things that I cover each week in the uh, the futures newsletter. I cover the long term charts to make sure. We're looking at some of those, and so pay you know I pay close attention to that because that could be the longer term picture. But I go from a daily, and then the next thing I do is I go down to a four hour chart, 240 minute, and that gives me a really good idea of what I'm watching. And as we get closer, I'll go down to a 60 minute, and you know see which patterns are there. And then finally, I'll go down to about a 15 minute. Sometimes I'll go down to five minute just to see how close we can get to what we think is going to be the ab absolute lower or high of that move. And that's what we what we try to do. It doesn't always work that way, but that's the way that I I try to uh, line it up so that I get as as close to what I think is that critical point that we're watching. So that's a key thing 
to look at. In fact, one of the things in the newsletter uh, yesterday, I said I had four things that I thought were going to happen uh, this uh, the first two days of this week. And one was the fact that we were going to see lower stock prices, lower bond prices. Uh, U.S. dollar would be under some pressure. And uh, what was the other? Oh, crude oil would also be under some pressure. Those were the ones that I was watching. So far, that's what happened uh, today. But in fact, that might not be long term. But that was just, you know, for the first couple of days. That's why tomorrow afternoon, I will send out a little resume of what these things are that we're looking at to see if our game plan is correct. Because it's much better to be out of a market wishing you were in than in a market wishing you were out. And uh, one thing that you can do to really help your trading is don't be be afraid to change your opinion, folks, because if the market's not going in the direction that you want, that's a uh, that's a very important thing to remember. In fact, that's the key thing. If you ever thought about adding to a losing position in all of trading, and I this is from Jesse Livermore and himself, and that is the single most silly thing that you can do is add to a losing position. First, your analysis is wrong. You're already wrong. That's A, number one. Number two is you're increasing your risk exposure even more so. I mean, that that's even worse than number one. So uh, that's why it's so terrible to try to add to losing position because eventually it's going to work part of the time, but eventually it's going to be the one that looks like Enron and it looks like some of the others that we've had, you know, WorldCom. <laughs> There's just so many of them uh, over the years. Uh, well, we can even throw in Sears to that and uh, J.C. Penney, uh, General Electric. You can see averaging down in General Electric. Boy, that would have been a really good deal, right? So that there's a, that's right, Mr. Z, G, Mr. Uh, GE is right in there you know, within that group. So that's why I would be really careful to do. In fact, that's not even careful. That's just silliness. Let's take a quick look here at the gold market. This is one of the things that I wanted to to watch to today coming in. This is another reason to see, you know, what we were looking at here in this breakout in the gold. You'll notice between January 23rd and 24th, that two-day move down that gave us that final bottom at the 382 at uh, the uh, 1275 level, that $10 drop led to that big move up. As you can see, we went up and made a 1.27 expansion of the high from way back in early January. Now, what we're watching for today, if you notice that red thunderbolt pattern there between the 23rd and 24th, all I did was I cloned that so that I could move it over to the right and just to see if I could get down to this level of a 12.93. And I, so far, we're trading it, I believe, Last I saw was a 12.97 or something, so we're not too far away. But I'd like to see if it's going to hold that 3.82 level because it's also near the breakout of January the 16th at 12.94. So that's going to be a, a pretty good area of support. Now, I mentioned when I started the show that there was a good increase in open interest in both gold and silver. That tells you that new buyers were coming in. There were also new sellers coming in, but the buyers had more power because it was going up faster than it was going down. So the buyers were in control. So we need to watch this extremely close because if we get below 1290, there's a possibility, folks, that that was a false breakout in the gold market. And there you have two reasons to think that. One is the fact that silver couldn't make a new high. And uh, the other factor is that we had this tremendously bullish thing happen with the XAU that was just, uh, it knocked the socks off of the people at uh, Bloomberg. They just kept talking about it, you know, all day on Friday. So we'll uh, bring that up to let you take a look at it here. But it had a, a really powerful move. And here again, it hasn't taken out those. Uh, it hasn't taken out those levels. Okay, now we've got a special request from Ruby, and that is about the hog market. And I really, I uh, really have something for you today, Ruby. I don't know if it's going to be right or not, but it's going to be interesting. Let's just take a look here uh, at, the, at the hogs. Just give me one second. Hog start. We're going to look at June hogs because that's the one we're looking at right here. We'll pull this up so you can take a quick look at it. And let's get this up here. You'll see that we are almost at the 61% retracement here in the hogs with the ABCD pattern down in here. Now, remember, these hogs have gone from 85 to 77 in the midst of a tremendous disease going on in uh, in China. Here again, there's the news, you know, staring us in the face. Everybody's listening to that is uh, sitting there looking at that hog from the wrong end.
And uh, now we're going to be at real serious support here because that's going to be the 61% retracement of the seasonal lows that we had back at 68. So it needs to hold that. And then most probably what will happen is, is that bottom is being formed. They're going to be telling us that the hog problem in China has been fixed. And that's probably not going to be true either. So we'll see uh, what's going to be uh, happening. So we'll, we'll look at that. Anyway. Those are the things that we're really keeping an eye on today and uh, to see what's going on. We've got crude oil down quite a bit this morning, and which is expected because we were right up near that 382 level. So we want to watch that uh, unfold as we go through. In fact, we'll look at crude oil uh, right here. You'll see that uh, oh, that's not the one I wanted to. Well, we'll get it up here. We're down about a buck and a half right now, and uh, that was to be expected because we've been straight up. Uh, since the 61% retracement was hit. So that'll tell us that we want to watch this retracement, uh, you know, very, very closely. So I believe we've got a break coming up here. I haven't heard the music yet. The time is up, but we'll have to uh, keep an eye on But That's it. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for the end of the show in just a couple of minutes. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that crude oil, why it was bearish. We had that bearish Gartley pattern uh, right up there at around one. Uh, excuse me, around 53.80. We're now trading $2 a barrel under that. That tells us that we're most probably going to go at least a little bit lower because of that wide-ranging bar. If we take a look here at the uh, 
at E mini S and P, you can see the butterfly. Excuse me, the Gartley pattern that we had here is basically a double top. Uh, the ABCD structure again went a little bit higher, mainly because of the strength of that uh, CD leg. And now we're approaching really strong support here at uh, 2625 as we finish the first half hour of trading. Any close below 2620 on a on these uh, hourly bars is going to set up a move to test probably the the 1.27 number down here at uh, either 120 uh, 29 2595 or 2575 if we get below that uh, 2625 we're trading at 26875 right now so with that big opening move down that's a pretty negative sign uh, to look at. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to update the newsletter after tomorrow's close. That'll tell us whether this market will continue down. You remember last Tuesday, we had that really terrible day. And the next day, the market reacted and went up the rest of the week. It was still down on the week, but it still had a pretty good move. So this is why we're at these critical levels right now. We'll pay very, very close attention to those. But that's the, that's the key here is watch 26.20. Uh, in this uh, S&P, because we should hold at 26.25, and if we don't, and if we don't, then you're looking at a whole lot lower prices. And see, early in the morning now, this is uh, what we call uh, amateur hour. So watch the prices at 10.30 if they start to stabilize. And you can listen to what Doug Ingram just said is look for a place where you've got a, either a, a higher bottom or a lower high. If you want to go long or short, that'll help you protect your risk against uh, any big catastrophic loss. So keep that in mind. We're going to have Tim Boss on Friday. So... Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!